Hello my loves and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Jessica Alexandria of Bahati Life Apothecary, professional astrologer, tarot, and intuitive reader. Thank you so much for hanging out with me once again. So guys, finally I got the message that I was waiting for. Um, and this video is probably going to be a little messy very unedited but I've waited for this message since yesterday and finally all of it came together just now just now like not even three minutes ago and I came running over here so for those of you guys that don't know oh also I was working out so please pardon my appearance but um, for those of you guys that don't know yesterday I went to the beach which I posted on my Instagram and while I was there I got a, a, a really strong message, a really strong intuitive message, but for whatever reason, I could not for the life of me figure out what it meant. Now I got the vision of it and I got the gist of what spirit was trying to tell me, what spirit was trying to show me, but it felt very, 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 very incomplete. and. I pretty much, I, I don't really like to force a message and I also, if I don't know who the message is for um, and all the rest of the details, I will hold on to it and I will continue to go back to my altar, go to spirit and ask for clarity, ask for discernment and ask for additional information. So I was surprised that it took this long for the confirmation and the additional details to come through as well as my own understanding. But when it did, you guys, when I tell you, I dropped everything that I was doing and I ran here and I just quickly set up the lights because the sun's going down and I've got renovations going on in my house right now and I, I do have the altar going. So I was working my magic earlier. I'll show see if I can show you guys a little bit. I've got some spell work going, but I was working my magic um, earlier than afterwards. I had like a surge of energy, so I just wanted to work it out. And then while I was working, working it out, um, clearly that's why I'm in my workout gear right now. I, the final message came through. Okay, so let's take a few steps back, okay? So yesterday, where this came from was, and for those of you guys that don't know, I, I'll just live my life and I'll get messages randomly if I'm not asking for them. And I usually ask for them in the mornings and, and get a download for myself. And then I get a download for you guys and I share them on my YouTube or I'll journal them for myself if they're for me, right? Because I can know who, who it's for and the details of it. And I'm always journaling them, right? So yesterday, it was in the late afternoon because there was storms that were rolling in, so it had to have been around like 3 p.m. I deviated from my normal path and I went to the beach, I went to the ocean, just to kind of like sit and ground myself and connect with the elements and get in the water and just kind of recharge and recenter. It felt really good, right? So I have my bag of snacks and I have a big thing of water and I go like I, I set up my little camp like I set up my little site there was literally no one out there pretty much I go out into the water I'm just kind of splashing around and then a spirit like I'm looking out into the ocean I'm setting my intention you know and just thanking the universe and thanking the divine and thanking my ancestors and my guides as the candle pops thanking my ancestors and my guides you know for their compassion all these things right and while I'm looking out to the ocean, something tells me to turn around and to look back to the shore. So I slowly kind of like pull my hands like this and I turn my body around and I look to the shore and there is a crow on my beach chair trying to figure out how to get into the bag of snacks. Now my first thought was, damn, crows are so smart. Like how did it know that I had a bag of snacks? That was my first thought, but that was my thought. My second thought was, what the fuck is a crow doing here on the beach when it's like literally nothing but seagulls? I live in Florida. I my my family's from the islands. Like we spend a lot of time on the on the beach by the water. I I don't think I've ever seen a crow out on the ocean, but that's neither here nor there. And then as soon as I had those thoughts, those feelings, all of a sudden, I get my Raven Simone. Um, that's so raven <laughs> like when I start to really channel it. It's not like that, but it's kind of similar But I just 
have a vision. And sorry guys if it's like loud, it's summertime here and the cricket cicadas are like going right now. I personally like it, but I get this like immediate vision um, of a word and the feeling of the word bitterness. Bitterness, B I T T is in tiger, T is in tiger, E R N is in Nancy, E S S. Bitterness. And I'm like, ooh, like who's that for? What was that? Is this? I I love crows. Ever since I lived in New Orleans, I have a very very healthy respect for a crow, for a crow magic and crow animal spirit and crow messages and just the crow in general. So I was so stunned by the fact that this message bitterness and this feeling of bitterness like I didn't feel the feeling of bitterness I felt the spirit of the word bitterness and spirit made it very clear that this was something that we would be talking about next on my on the YouTube channel that I would be bringing to the collective to to you know to our group you who is listening now so I sat there and I kind of swam around and I'm, you know, just kind of watching this crow. And I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to head back. As I'm saying that, my chicken is like attacking the other chicken, like the girls. But speaking of bitter. <laughs> so I, I head back and I'm trying to calm myself and just go through every ritual and routine and the feeling that I always go into in order to prep myself in order to receive more information to talk to spirit nothing else came through nothing else came through but except this feeling of this is a loaded message there is way more to it than just that word and bitterness is not at all what it seems or look like it will be right so I I go about my night, go about my day, we'll go about my day and then go about my night because at nighttime I had like my whole ritual, my routine that I do for night, that's just for my regular life, like my personal life, well, personal meaning like my day to day, like my silly things that I do, like skincare routine, hygiene, diet, stuff like that, and then my spiritual life where I wind down for the night, go into my meditative state, journal, reflect, blah, 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 right? So I wake up this morning and I'm like, I'm still thinking about it. In the back of my mind, I'm, I keep thinking about how the crow showed up. How the crow and this word bitterness. And I'm like, I'm, I'm ready, spirit. Like, you already know. Like, I'm ready to work with you. I'm ready to work magic with you. I'm ready to, ready to receive whatever this message is for. Are you saying that I'm bitter? Like, what is it? And this message whoever it is for it's very 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 specific um but i feel like if you're open to it more people are going to understand it when they really sit with it and if you decide to sit with it you're going to need to kind of like set the intention set the tone and the space for you to sit with it so, long story short, I'm going about my day today, and I am working my magic. I got my candle going for my friend, because she needed me to set some magic for her. This is the Nectar of Life candle that's burning, by the way. We have some peti um, petitions and some energy work going on here. By the way, everything is from my garden. Can I just show you this real quick? Neither here nor there. Okay. We'll just, we'll talk about that another day. Um, but, or do you guys kind of want to see it? Let me just show you so these are from my hibiscus tree, which is so dope. Then we have crepe myrtle here, which has started to melt because this candles have been going since earlier today. We have lilies, and we also have lavender, crepe myrtle flowers, and gardenias. Everything is from my garden. Anyways, so shout out to my baby. If you want to put um, some good energy into the candle, feel free to go ahead and do that, or just um good vibes right okay so let me grab my notes okay so i'm i i am at i feel this surge of energy while i'm working on my altar this has nothing to do with the crow this has nothing to do with the message i pretty much had not given up on receiving the rest of the message um today but i just was like clearly spirit it was in the back of my mind but i'm like i can't force spirit to tell me and this is just one of those things that it'll take time for it to come through 
So the first thing that I felt, again, and I wrote this at the top, is the spirit of bitterness. And basically what spirit wanted to talk about with this is that it almost feels like forbidden fruit. So what does that mean? That means that something is forbidden, right? An energy or something that is living that is forbidden. Like it is something that is forbidden. And when you bite into it, when you consume it, when you connect with it, when you be a part of it, when you harmonize, when you align with it, when you allow it in, it becomes a part of you and it starts to come alive. So even though you may not think of the word bitterness as something that is living, some spirit is saying that this is a spirit of bit bitterness that is living, feasting, breeding, breeding, B-R-E-E-D as in a dong. I almost said dong, but literally B is like, what? Dog. We'll say dog. <laughs> dong. I'm so, I'm so stupid. Okay. <laughs> B is in boy. R, E is an egg, which we have here too, by the way, from my garden. Well, from my chickens. E is an egg, E is an egg, D is in dog, um, I, N, G, breeding. So there's a spirit of bitterness that has been breeding, right? And it has started to live within someone. And all you needed, and a lot of us are going to look at that and we're gonna be like, no, not me. Like, I'm not, I'm not bitter. And this is where it's just like, I, I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. But spirit, when spirit speaks, we have to listen. Or you don't have to listen if you don't want to. But there's, it's like a tiny seed, right? A tiny seed of bitterness that was placed at any point within the life, at any point within the journey. And it starts to, just like any seed, sometimes it starts to grow. Sometimes it starts to fester. Sometimes it starts to manifest. Or sometimes we feed it, right? So... Um, the spirit of bitterness, it's how you look at things, it's how you see things, it's how you feel things, it's how you react to things. So this is, when, and how do we feed the spirit of bitterness? It could be something that has built up resentment within us, and please don't click out yet, you guys, because a lot of you guys are going to immediately be like, no, that's not me, but let me tell you. So, basically what spirit showed me while I was working out just now, and all of a sudden, I just literally had the revision and instead of me seeing it with my physical eyes I now saw it with my third eye okay the the crow the same crow that I saw last night I'm sorry or yesterday trying to get into that bag of chips and he was she was harmless I'm gonna say it was she she was harmless just looking for a snack I get it right it wasn't the act of the crow going into the bag of chips going into the pretzels it was what the crow at that moment energetically represented just like how when we're shuffling tarot and we can see like the wheel that wheel could represent a tire it could represent a literal wheel that we can use in order to move our car from one point to the other or it sim symbolically can represent whatever it takes the life of so in that moment spirit showed me the spirit of bitterness and in that moment, second moment, while I was working out and saw the vision through my third eyes, I saw the spirit of bitterness and I received the rest of the download. What the rest of the download is, is ancestors. Ancestry and past life connections that you have experienced, whether you know or not. When it comes to ancestry, your ancestors have lived their own life, they've lived their own legacy, they've lived their own truth, and they've had highs and lows, ups and downs, growth moments, lesson moments, all of those things. And there are certain things that they have grown, like, uh, um, that they detest. They have certain things that they do not like, that they do not love. And those things, even though you have not experienced them, their memories, their core values, their their dynamics, their personality are things that are passed through your blood, blood are in your DNA, in your DNA. And you wouldn't actively know this, but it's the memory of it, the seed that was once planted, the bitterness that your ancestor felt for good or for bad. And there's no judgment or any harshness towards it's human, it's human for a, a it's natural for a human being to have some level of bitterness or resentment or at some point within their life. So this moment of bitterness that was going through your ancestors' blood is now something that is being passed or 
was captured in your own DNA. Now that you are living this life, now that you have matured up until this point, your ancestors have shown you, each one of them have shown you different ways of living your life and changing the course of your legacy. However, at the same time that you have been successful, there have been certain pitfalls that you have been taught from them or from your own experience to avoid. When you see those certain pitfalls because you, they remind you of poison, they remind you of things that have hurt you, they have remind you of things that have hindered you, that have enslaved you, that have captured you, that have trapped you, you will have a certain sense of immediate resentment and want to detach yourself from that, especially now in today's day and age. The same thing applies to not just your ancestors, but also to your past lives, the, last, the lives that you have already lived before you live this one now. There are same experiences, same moments, same growth moments, same moments of lessons, same ups, same downs, same pitfalls, same moments of growth that have been provided tribulation, but have taught you to have a certain seed of bitterness or the spirit of resentment or the spirit of bitterness within you in order to protect and to preserve what you've worked so hard to, to keep safe, to keep sacred, or to not repeat again. Something about this generation right now, the spirit of bitterness is living. And I am really, really cautious and I'm really, really careful in saying that because I believe that words are powerful. And I believe that intention and will is very, very powerful. And we have to be very, very clear and we have to be very careful with what we are saying because we can speak it into existence. We can make it come to life. And energy is very living and spirit is saying that the highest divine said and spoke that bitterness the spirit of bitterness is alive, living. If it's not one, one, if it's not within you, or if you're not fully aware, it's in the environment. What does this mean? This means that it was the seed was planted, and for 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 whatever reason, when you see certain things, it will create. I just heard the word attachment. Like you have, and by attachment, I don't think, I don't believe that it means that you are attached to anything or anyone. It's a, the attachment to the thought. It's the attachment to the energy. It's the attachment to spirit, right? So let's say you have a, a, an attachment to what the idea of love or affection looks like. That's your attachment to it because that's your belief. That is what you have grown accustomed to. That is what you have taken as your own. That is what is living and breathing within you. Even though you may not see it inhaling and exhaling, you, because you are holding on to it, because it's in your body, because it becomes a part of your core belief, it is now living and breathing, right? So it now, and now there's there, there's an attachment. Now it's alive. Something about society and spirit didn't need me to go into any further details when it comes to that because for the most of us, we can recognize the spirit of bitterness and how people treat each other, how people treat the earth, how people treat their bank accounts, how people treat the food that they eat, how the government treats the people that it's supposed to protect, all of it, right? We can see the spirit of bitterness everywhere. But the thing is, is that we are in a, a core moment or your ancestors, your divine, the divine specifically has shown up to say, we want you, I want you to see the spirit, the seed of, of the seed of bitterness, that spirit that is starting to feed, that is starting to fester, that is starting to grow. This may not necessarily be your doing. This may have been something that has been done to you in the past lives, past mistakes, past lessons, past hurts from those who have come before you, right? Spirit showed me how, and I'm getting a vision again of the crow, just the crow just trying to like make do, right? Um, just with this bag of chips, like the, the crow is just doing what it need, what it does learn to survive, right? So there's something about how we've learned about boundaries, how we've learned to protect our peace. So, and this is separate. Okay, because something about this is spirit is really wanting us to look at this differently um, and says that like some sometimes the let me see. Okay, I wrote down it has it also has to do with boundaries and self-respect, which has morphed and evolved into self-defense 
armor a wall and has then become rigid. Spirit wants you to first see how you can react to something, right? Or to see the seed of bitterness. So let's say you see someone kind of treat you a certain way or say something a certain way and you're like, uh-uh, that's it. That's what I don't allow. That's what I'm not about. That's what I don't like. My boundaries, I'm protecting my peace and I'm removing that. That's what you would normally see as self-protection, spirit for whatever reason or the divine is saying, we want you to see how this could maybe potentially be you feeding the seed or the spirit of bitterness within your body. What does that mean? That means that your body, I just heard the fruit that your ancestors, the fruit that your guides, the fruit that your past lives have already eaten, it, your body has had a reaction to it. So as soon as you, at some point in the past, so at some point, like, well now that when you see that fruit, you have a bitter reaction to it. You detest it. You immediately boundaries, self-protect in order to preserve the balance and the peace of the body. Now I'm not saying that you go out and eat poisonous fruit that your ancestors have already learned that this is not um, you know, good for you or food that you have an, had an allergic reaction to or, or that you open yourself up to anything that would cause any undue hurt, damage, pain, suffering. Spirit wants you, the divine, it's like specifically the divine, the highest divine, the highest spirit, right? Wants you to see how you might be able to be, how you might be looking at things and projecting from that seed of bitterness because of what has been learned. And when you start to see that, you accidentally, sorry guys, I've been working on oils too, so there's bottles here. When you start to do that, you, 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 the things that you have already learned, the experiences that you have your past life or your ancestors have gone through, <clears throat> you will naturally have a reaction to it and you'll want to self-protect, self-armor, wall up. But something about that, Spirit is saying before you react to it, you, we want you to see that you are feeding into the spirit of bitterness, okay? And that is what they don't want. It's your inability to see yourself and others with a soft heart. So there's certain things about yourself. Maybe you don't allow yourself to rest um, because your ancestors, when they rested, they were, you know, thrown somewhere or hurt severely or poverty, Maybe you, your ancestors, they lived through severe poverty, so all you know is how to work, or all you know is how to stretch a can of beans, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, whatever it is, to the point where you don't allow yourself to enjoy a nice meal, to relax, to surrender, because there's a feeling the spirit of bitterness is living within you and comes to life and is fed every single time you have guilt or shame or remorse and when you go and have a fine dinner with your friends or family or the partner your partner right so you're you may be very aware of it or you may be unaware of it so there might be certain things that maybe with like love relationships or how you view yourself that when you look at it you may not be able to see that you are having a bitter reaction to it or the spirit of bitterness has a reaction to it. And it might have started small. Small and completely inconspicuous. Is that the right word? Where you are completely oblivious to it. And the more that it starts to grow and the more that you start to feed it because you are unaware, the more it has started to grow, to morph and evolve into your new normal. And now, instead of you moving from this high vibration and feeling and being disillusioned by this idea that you're doing things from a higher high vibe or from a space of love, it's actually not. It's coming from the space, the seed of bitterness that is alive and well and, and living within you. I know. I know. It's crazy. I know. I don't know even know now what... Okay, Spirit just told me an example. I was going to say, I don't know <laughs> where this message might apply in my life, but Spirit just showed me. Okay, thank you for shading, <laughs> shading me in front of all my friends. No, I'm just kidding. But, um, no, I, I, I really do appreciate it. But, okay, moving on though. So, okay, to look at what you don't want to see, the people or your family, yeah, 
So th there is this message too about this being what you look at within yourself, but also the the uh, bitterness that you may feel towards your family, towards the expectations, to the people that you love the most, especially the people that you love the most, and how they react and how they move, and how you might have a certain level of bitterness because of how they show up. You know what I mean? And ans your ancestors are have started to whisper while you're working at your altar. So this is for high vibrational people, people who have been actively working their magic, working to break generational curses, working to free themselves of certain blockages and all those things, or meditating or doing yoga or eating healthy or just going more interested in a high vibrational, high spiritual reality. It's like your ancestors went from a whisper to they started drumming, right? And basically this, this is where the crow came out. The crow came out of the drum. Like it came out of the drum circle, it came out of the summoning, right? And, and was on the beach. And I swear to God, you guys, I was not on drugs. <laughs> this is just how messages come through. But this is why it took so long for me to unpack this because it was me just seeing that crow and receiving that download. I, it took me all day and it, into the night clearly in order for me to understand exactly. So, it was from the whisper of your ancestors saying, this is our truth, this is my bitterness, this is my pain, this is my suffering. They keep whispering it, whispering it, whispering, whispering it, and getting louder and louder until they're singing it and they're drumming it. And you can hear it, you're starting to hear it. And the more that you start to hear their calls, it's not like screaming, it's like loud singing and drumming. The more that you hear their calls and they're calling out the truth of their feelings of resentment and bitterness and hatred and suffering, the more you're like, no, I'm preserving my peace. I have my boundary. I'm resisting this. And you don't even realize it because it, there's this disillusionment around you, this facade, this mask of you telling yourself, I'm preserving my peace. I'm protecting my boundaries. I'm not allowing them in, right? But Spirit is saying, it, you, they want you, the divine wants you to literally look at what you don't want to see. This is the people or your family or your lovers or your relationships. It has a lot to do with like your core beliefs, your core value. This has to do with um, the things that have been burnt down, the, the, the walls that have been built up. This has to do with you looking at the very thing that you continue to struggle with, that you continue to fail at, the thing that you have lost your faith on, the thing that you were like, this is a repeated pattern of divorce in my family or miscarriages within, within the women in my family or the men in my family. These are the very thing that has plagued you, the very thing that you struggle with, the very thing that is hopeless is the same thing that spirit is like, the divine, you guys. There's one thing for spirit, the next thing for divine. The divine is like, this we I'm going to crush the spirit of bitterness and allow and open your eyes to see past to see beyond okay and I'm gonna and guys did I not say this week because I was just about to say it did I not say this week the word starve I said the word starve it's about starving the things that have grown and one of those things is literally the seed of bitterness. The, it's living, it, Spirit said very clearly, it's alive and well, it's rampant. And the problem is, globally, that people are afraid to look at it. They're really afraid to look at it. For really like core root chakra, generational, terrified to look at, to look at it. I get it. Okay. So, the next thing that it is I said, or that I wrote down was, the crow represents the bitterness, the frustration. And then when she was seen, she then morphed into wisdom and magic and um, I don't know what this word is. Oh. Um, she then morphed into wisdom, magic, and believe it or not, fertility. So that was that was it, guys. Literally blown away. So um, I know that this is not one of those messages that will immediately resonate with 
the collective, um, but spirit, the divine, was really, really clear that it was in every single one of us. And for us to be able to see it, to acknowledge it, if you guys hear any noise, my chickens are starting to roost. Um, and they've been hanging out by the fountain, which is on this side, and um, right in front of me here. But this is my sun room where I do some of my magic. Anyways, um, Spirit is saying that it's alive and well in each and every single one of us. And if we don't see it, then we're, it's, it's like we're adding to the collapse of this, I don't want to say humankind, but like where society is headed now and where humankind is headed. And... I have great faith in humanity. I have great faith in the earth. I have great faith in my spiritual practice because the divine has breathed into my spirit to have faith, not with optimism, but because this is literally what can happen and what is happening. But it's conversations and messages and prophetic visions and all of those things that feed into that happening. The last thing I want to say to you is um, people are going to, the divine's ultimate goal, and this is just what I'm hearing right now, um, and what I'm seeing right now is like a kumbaya moment. So the divine's goal, God's goal, is to, is there's no boundaries, right? There's no, there, the spirit is moving us, the divine is moving us to a point where there's no cross wires or misfires. What does that mean? That means that spirit, the divine, wants us to see how we are all connected. So if you're watching this video right now and you are anti whatever my, you know, whatever belief system, or if you're looking at what, how I practice and how I honor the divine and how I work my magic and how I, what I believe, I respect that, but I also, Spirit is saying now to respect me and to respect the message because don't look at what it looks like on the outside, okay? Look at the, the core value, the, the core truth of this message because every single one of us has different paths and different ways of going back to Spirit, to going back to the Divine and connecting and lifting the vibration of the earth and to each their own right so and maybe that's something that someone here needs to hear and someone here needs to receive is the fact that maybe their own belief system their way of thinking it's my way this is right there was this message of i was i'm right and you're wrong this has a lot to do too with like fights miscommunication or not being able to see eye to eye because you're moving from your ego because you're moving from your defense because you were taught that if a, a, a person speaks up and says that they disagree with you, that they don't respect you, and now you're inflamed, and now the connection is over. These are things that are going to be challenged, that spirit wants to challenge within you right now. If not, you're going to continue to feed and fuel the living seed of bitterness that is living within every single one of you like a fucking parasite. And the divine does not want that. The divine says, starve it, start over, and feed into yourself an open mind, an open heart, and a higher vibration that says, I'm going to consider where you might have come from and throw my ego aside. I know what my, my ancestors have lived through. I know what my family has taught me. I know what I have learned in my own experience, but that is my own experience, and it has... I do not want my experiences to make me shun out a blessing, the next blessing or the next gift or how I can give or what I should open my heart to accept, to receive, to be open to at this point in my life and in my journey. And I'm telling you with gratitude, love, abundance, peace, all of that will prevail. All right, my loves, I'm sending you guys all of my love. Um, thank you to Spirit for giving me the words um, and additional messages as I was channeling because I'm really feeling it. I'm going to finish my workout because I am like, I feel like I took an espresso shot, like literally my hands are shaking and I have not had coffee today besides early this morning. So this is just how Spirit moves to me. So I need to burn this off and I'm going to do some Reiki energy on my chickens um, just because they, they like it. <laughs> Um, and but until then you guys I do want to invite you to subscribe to my youtube channel because there's plenty more videos where this came from and of course I'll see you in my next one. Bye